now we're at the point that I've been wanting to be at for a few weeks, tearing into this sucker and seeing what's wrong with it. Shall we proceed? Let's dive right in, get it cleaned off, get the intake heads off, and see what we're working with. I'm gonna say this motor never had the oil change and they probably used Quaker State. Golly. Wow. I think I found out why I wasn't getting any oil up here. I believe his push rod stopped up because there's oil on the bottom. There ain't none on the top. Now, before I pull these heads off, I'm gonna tell you, one of these two cylinders is most likely gonna have a broke piston. And I think I did it with a big old chain wrench when I had it up here, breaking it loose. Because when I was turning it with the starter, I heard something banging in one of these two. I bet you money, it probably broke a ring link. Let's see. All righty. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it to come off that easy. Broke ring land. I thought I heard something rattling around in there. Goodness, look at the rust and crap all in them cylinders. Let me get you in here and let you see. She's pretty nasty down in there. Goodness and griefus. There's that broke uh, ring land. See it right there. See the ring. So we'll have to have at least one piston. Man, this thing is so nasty. Good grief. Just look at it. This side ain't as bad, but it's pretty bad still. It's got a, a little bit of a ring ridge. It ain't too bad. I think it's mostly just rusted up. Uh, the cylinders don't look all that bad. Of course, I mean, there's rust, but they don't look that bad. I believe if there ain't nothing major wrong, that uh, we can get away with the hone and a re-ring new bearings, I believe. Let's just look at the bottom end first. How much earl do we have left in it? Oh, wow. <laughs> That's like syrup. Good grief. Wow. Look at it. Golly. This oil's been draining for about I don't know, 15 minutes? Watch the blobs come out of it. <laughs> Good grief, that's just disgusting. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh my goodness gracious. We have lots and lots of water in it. And that's not antifreeze. So, we'll all have some lots of cracks. Lots of water. Probably lots of cracks too. Alright, he's on his head.
Well, that is absolutely and positively, without a doubt, disgusting. Good grief. Look at that. Holy crap. Ooh. Man, this thing's disgusting. Before I do any of this, I'm going to turn it back over and we'll get the front end off, get that cam out. This is really starting to aggravate me. I think I might opt for a new set of uh, lifters. This one's stuck. I don't know. I don't know. It came out now it won't. Only thing I know to do is go ahead and get the front off, get the chain off maybe, and uh, roll that cam over and maybe it'll pop that out where I can get it out. That's a little sloppy even for a Chevrolet. <clears throat> Alright, I'm going to shove that back in there and turn it. This lifter that I couldn't get out. Hopefully it'll pop it up. Yeah, there it is right there. Alright, let me get that out. That was a stubborn little devil. All right, let's get the cam out. I'm gonna try not to beat it up because I'm probably gonna reuse it. But then again, I don't know. I might put a little cam in it. We just have to see when that time gets here. All right, let's get that cleaned up and look at it. Well, fellas, it ain't a brand new cam. I haven't inspected every lobe, but the ones I've looked at, there ain't nothing wrong with that cam. There ain't no scars in the bearings. I mean, I don't, I don't see no problem with reusing it. Like I said, I might go ahead and buy a little cam kit just so it'll hit a little lick. We'll just have to see. I'm gonna leave this crank in because I'm curious as to why this thing is so hard to turn. I wanna know if it's the pistons, the rod, main bearings, what is it? Some of these ring ridges are rusty.
This cylinder right here has a lot of rust in it and it don't come out at all. I'm gonna have to do a lot of sanding on it. I just found the reason why we won't be able to use this block. That's really, really, really bad pitted. We'll just have to see once I get this piston out. There's the one with the broken ring land. That's pretty smooth right there. It was definitely the pistons had it locked up. All right, let's get this crankshaft out of here. Well, the crank ain't bad. The, the mains look really good. The rod journals, they've got somewhere. I can feel it on every one of them. But for what we're doing, I think it'll be just fine. I did nick them a couple of times with a raw bolt. You know what? Some memory cloth. Take care of that. I promise you. For what we're doing, it's not a race motor. It'll be just fine. But I'm worried about number six cylinder. So no, you can't see that on camera, but that is really, really bad right there. It's, you know, dug out, pitted really bad. I don't know if I want to try to use this block or not because of that. The rest of it looks pretty good. Even the pistons, you know, I mean, they got wear, but they're not, they're not bad. So I've got to decide if I want to use this block or not. What I might do tomorrow is, uh, hone this a little bit just see what it feels like if it smoothed out we may go ahead and use it i don't know we'll just have to wait and see all right fellas i had a plan for a motor for this truck it ain't gonna work that motor there is what come out of it that motor there's four bolt main block i've had for a while it come out of another square body oh uh, it has I, I, I put the dial board gauge in it it's got seven, eight thousandths taper, which is quite a bit, but I believe it would be okay for what we're doing. The crank looks better too. It only had about one to two thousandths wear. Whereas this one here, the block is actually better. It's only got about five or six thousandths taper, but the crank is worse with about three thousandths wear. Here's, the, the, here's what I was gonna do. I was gonna take the pistons out of this one, put them in that one, with the crank out of that one and put it back together. Well, this motor has been bored 40 over. The crank has been turned 10 on the mains, 20 on the rods, which that doesn't matter, but the, the 40 over pistons do because I was gonna use those pistons in that block. So this block for now, can't use it. I wanna get this motor put back together and in that truck cheaply as possible. So all we're gonna do, hone it, re-ring it, New bearings with the crank out of this one. And I'll have to have new lifters because those are trash. I'm gonna reuse everything else, including the heads. It does have two stuck valves and it's really, really rusty. So I gotta clean them up, get them operating properly. And I'll put new cam bearings in it also. I'm gonna use the cam that come out of it. Cause right now the goal is to get this truck out of those woods under its own power as cheaply as possible. And about number six cylinder being so bad, I honed it too. And it don't look any better as far as the pits go. But ain't nothing I can do about it. So hopefully it won't eat the rings up too fast. And like I said, have you seen the truck? Have you seen the truck? You know, I'm not gonna spend a bunch of money on a motor for that truck right now. Y'all remember how this head had two stuck valves? Well, I got my little hammer out and it was pecking on that valve. And it just, well, it just fell off. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to find a set of heads. I've actually got a set. Let me show you what they are. I got two sets of heads. Well, actually I got three. Well, no, I got four. Uh, these are double humps. This set little 283, you may have heard me mention at a time or two. 
I was going to build it when I was like 18 or 19 and never got around to it. Well, those were the double hump heads I was going to use. Well, there's another 283 block with another set of double hump heads. Then I got these old small heads right here. It probably ain't no count, but they're doing a pinch. Then I've got a set of, uh, uh, what do you call them? Vortec heads at my house. But I'm probably going to use these right here because way back when, you know, it, they had been gone through and uh, been cleaned up and everything. So we're probably going to use those on that motor. Well, I think I'm going to start with my least favorite part of anything, and that's cleaning stuff up. I hate it. I think I'll start with the cam because, well, it's right here in front of me. So let me get the purple power out, and we'll get started cleaning all this nasty stuff. This is my purple power soaking tank. Well, more of a tub. Anyway, I just took the pistons and rods out. They're outside. I fixed to spray them off. I'm fixing to put rocker arms and various things in there, plus the cam. Drop it down in there, let it soak, because it's got crud all over it too. Let's go uh, clean the pistons and rods, and I need to get the rings off and uh, clean the ring grooves out. One down, seven to go. I got some good 350, 40 over rings if anybody needs them. Well, I got a pile of rings right there. And I also got two pistons. I can't get the rings out. That and there, the whole top ring. This one, there's a little section right there I can't get out. So I think I'm going to hit them with the torch and uh, let's see if I can break them loose. Maybe I can get them out that way. Maybe buying two pistons, I don't know. This here is just a little piece. Surely it'll come loose. Well, it's not going very good. All right. I need two pistons. Well, the heat ain't gonna break that and loose either, so I'm gonna soak it in something. Transmission fluid, I don't know. We'll find something to put it in. This piston I've had soaking for, I don't know, three or four days. And I'm starting to get the rings out of it. It ain't pretty, but they're coming out. Breaking. So once I get this one out, 
then I need to clean all the ring grooves on all of them and then I guess move on to cleaning something else I hate cleaning Oh yeah, I got all that ring out. I buggered it up a little bit. Oh, I got a little file set over there. Plus, when I get done, I'm gonna take a steel wool and go over the whole piston and knock off any burrs that might be there. But let me get a little file, see if I can uh, file that down a little bit. Now that I got all the rings off the pistons, I got to clean the ring roots. I was going to show you this little apparatus right here, which is a ring groove cleaning tool, but I broke it. Well, I can still show you on the oil ring, so let me show you. What you do is you just put your piston in here like so. It's got this area and this area that the ring groove sits in and the piston rests on. Just like that, and just like that. And then you take this piece here, and it goes up. Got little teeth here and a little locking thing. And these things here, they're different sizes for different uh, size ring grooves. One I got in there for the old uh, ring groove. And you got a fine adjustment here. It, it's going to cut just a little light cut to make sure it gets all that uh, carbon and crap off. This is your fine adjustment right here going in and out to make it cut just enough. You see right there, it's just barely making a mark. Well, I'm going to knock it loose and then tighten it back up. Um, but it's just barely making a mark, and that's probably good enough. Matter of fact, it's starting to cut a little bit now. So, yeah, that's probably good enough. Then, all you do is unloose that. Look it off. See that shine in there where it cut just a little bit of aluminum off? Make sure you got all the copper, uh, copper uh, all the carbon off. And uh, there you go. Now, since I broke this piece here, I can't use it on these smaller ones. I'll, I'll have to see if I can get one of them. So what you do if you don't have it to, or you broke it like I did, get you an old ring that fits that groove, and you just go to scraping away. It takes a long time sometimes, because these are really crudded up. But you wanna get all the carbon and all the trash out, because if you don't, that ring can't squeeze, possibly, all it needs to, break a ring, or you pop a ring land off. You ain't gonna have a good time if you do that. So let me get all these cleaned up, which is probably gonna take a little while. Then I'll be back. Alrighty, I think I got them all clean. They look clean anyway, so uh, I'll spray them out with car cleaner and hit them with air probably here in a little bit. But what I wanna do next, is these pistons have gotten beaten up a little bit me trying to beat the rings out of them and like right there there's a little bit of a nick so what i want to do is just lightly very lightly knock that high spot off see them right there you can see that or not it's got high spots just lightly file it until you get them high spots gone that's all you want to do Normally you wouldn't have to do this because normally you wouldn't be using pistons that you had to beat the rings off of them. But you know, this is a very, very, very low budget review. And so sometimes you gotta do things you wouldn't normally do. What I'm gonna do is go around all the pistons like this. And if I feel any, any kind of burrs, I'm gonna knock them down to file. Then I'm gonna take a, a we call it steel wool, and we'll shine them up, and then they'll be ready for rings. All right, I think I'm about done shining on them with steel wool. They all feel pretty smooth, except for this one here. This is number six, I got it marked. If you remember, number six is the one that had the really, really bad rust in the cylinder wall, and you can tell it on this piston too. Now, that these are all cleaned up, well, mostly, I got these two here. This is the one with the broke ring land. And this is the one I broke skirt on. So I've got to 
replace the pistons. I got two pistons coming. When they get here, we'll do that. But for now, I think I will start cleaning other stuff. I got some stuff soaking in the tank over here. I got both valve covers in there full of bolts and rocker arms and I don't know what all. Plus I got the old distributor in there soaking it. I'm fixing to put the timing chain cover in there and I got the oil pan out the woods letting it drain because it had about 10 gallons of sludge in it. So let's pull the valve covers out and uh, go through them and clean all that up now. I think I'm going to take a wire brush to everything. Maybe that'll help clean. I may have to soak these again. That purple power, it sort of reminds me of any of y'all own a pool. But to get rid of algae in a pool, you have to stir it up because it gets a, like a skin over top of it and chemicals usually won't do nothing to it. Well, that's the way this grease is with that uh, purple power. If you don't scrub it and knock that top layer off it, a lot of times it won't do nothing to it. So I guess that's what I'm gonna have to do here because this ain't really cleaning up all that good. All right, I got the rocker arms clean. I might stick them back in the tub and soak for a little while. But uh, now I'm cleaning the head bolts and yes, I am going to reuse the head bolts. Do I need to go over Y again? Have you seen the truck? Okay. Well, I was about to start cleaning on this valve cover here, and I noticed this little cutout place here. I don't think that's going to seal, so I can't use it. I think I've got another set just like that. So I guess we'll use them. So now that I'm done sticking this wire brush in my thumb, about 47,000 times. I'm gonna put these up there clean. I'll probably spray them with WD-40. I'll go get the other valve cover because it's full of stuff too. Here's the other valve cover. It had more head bolts. It had the water neck. I, I'm gonna put this in some boiling water to see if it opens. If it does, I think I'm gonna reuse it just because. Anyway, head bolts, uh, I believe those are old pan bolts, intake bolts. This valve cover is good, so I'm gonna spray it down with WD-40 and put it on the shelf and save it. So I think what I got left is time and chain cover, the cam, and the distributor. Yes, I'm soaking the distributor because it was pretty nasty too. So let me get all them cleaned up. Well, I got everything clean except for the oil pan. It's still out in the woods draining. And this block, I hadn't cleaned it because I'm gonna have to clean it after I hone it anyway. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hone it and then I'll give everything good cleaning. I mean, look at the sludge. It's just, it's disgusting. Anyway. I'm not going to talk much about the honing because there's a million different opinions out there on what to use, how to do it, and all that. I'm just going to show you three types of hones, and I'm going to show you how I hone, and then that's it because, well, it's just too much to get into. That's what you call a ball hone or a dingleberry hone. It's for deglazing. If you got a pretty good cylinder and you just want to re-ring it, use that. Or if you want to fool yourself into thinking that this wore out motor is looks real good well let's use one of these i might show you here in a minute how that'll fool you this one here is pretty much good for nothing in my eyes because well let me show you watch how when you come out here they flop out see that all this type of hone is good for is tapering the cylinder at the top because of the way it flops out you know if you keep it in here like this it, it, it'll probably do pretty good. But most people, they're gonna bring them out here like this and see what it does. That's gonna taper that top or bottom of the cylinder. This is the one I use right here. See how they're fixed? They don't flop in and out. That's the one you wanna use. Now let me, I'm gonna put that dingleberry hone on there real quick and uh, just show you how it'll fool you into thinking you got a good looking cylinder. All right, I just did this cylinder here with that uh, ball hone. Looks absolutely gorgeous, don't it? I mean, beautiful. That's number six cylinder. That's the one that's got them really bad dugout places. It'll fool you. I'm gonna do this one here with that home that I told you I like to use, and we'll compare the looks. All right, remember how pretty that one looked? Look how terrible that one looks. And I honed them both the same amount of time. See all those dark spots? That's the low spots in the cylinder. A, a ball home, it'll fool you into thinking you got a wonderful looking cylinder. But you know, I'm gonna hone this a little bit more, make it look a little better. But 
The reason that is, that ball home is not rigid. It can touch every part in that cylinder. Whereas the other one, you know, they're fixed and it's going to show you the imperfections in that cylinder. It's, I mean, these, this motor's wore out. There ain't no doubt about that. But that's about all I'm going to say about honing. I'm going to set the camera up and show y'all drill speed and in and out speed to get this uh, 45 degree hatch. Where is it? Right there. And then that's about all I'm going to talk about on honing. First thing you want to do is wipe that cylinder out and make sure there ain't no big pieces of trash or anything in there. Get it good and clean. Then take you some WD-40 or whatever, any kind of lubricant. I always use WD-40. Get it in there real good. Then take this, put it in there like that. You don't want to turn the RPMs of the drill very fast, but you want to move in and out pretty fast, just like about like this. Hear me hitting that bottom down there? You got to watch out for that too. The faster you go with the drill speed, the more straight your line is going to be instead of being a cross hatch. Let me wipe that out and we'll look good. All right, see all them dark spots? That just shows you how wore out that this cylinder is. Look at them. It ain't even hardly touching right in there. Um, I, got, I got a lot more to do, but that's about all I'm going to show you on the honing. I'll be back when I'm, uh, when I'm done with it. Let me say something else about this hone right here. Well, let me say this first. This hone is very forgiving. Let me show you. You can stick it in the bore. You can be off center, and it's still going to be fairly flat with the cylinder. Well, this one here, that's not the case. If you're all, if you get off center a little bit, see how that one there rocks back and forth. So you've got to keep this hone pretty well centered. But you can tell by the sound. It'll go to, well, it'll just make a different sound when you get off center and you got to find where center is again. But I still like that home better than any other home there is. Well, I got them honed about all I'm gonna do. Are they perfect? Absolutely not. Are they better than they were? Yeah, probably a smidge. But you can see, see that dark spot there, that one down there. Um, I don't really see one in that one. And that one there don't have one, but over here, this one has the dark spots here, there, that we got one way on down there. That's most likely where the pistons were at rest when this thing sat there for 39 years. And it's just pitting and, you know, other than boring it, I can't get that out. Can't get the ring ridge out. This is where it wears the most right there. And, you know, other than boring it out, you ain't gonna get rid of it. But, like I said before, have you seen the truck? <laughs> this is just a very, 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 very cheap rebuild. Just to get it running. Anyway, now that I'm done with that, I'm going to roll this outside and uh, go to scraping all this gunk out. And I may go get me some gunk to spray it down with. And purple power. And see if I can't uh, get it looking a little better than it does on the inside. Outside, I plan on leaving it just like this so it matches the truck. So let me get that outside and start on it. Well, I'm working on getting the engine cleaned up, degreased. I've been scraping and brushing for probably two hours. That's how disgusting it was. Well, it's taking a bath in gunk engine degreaser right now. And I am attempting to uh, clean the water jackets. How the thing ever cooled, I don't know. I don't know if you can see it down in there, but it's, it's almost completely full right there. And it ain't a whole lot better right there. So I'm gonna have to do a whole lot of flushing on the water jacket and you got some holes. This is completely stopped up. So I probably got another three or four days cleaning this block. So I'll be back sometime. When you have to take a hammer and a pointy object and drive it through 
to the water jacket because there's so much rust well it's a good sign that this motor has been severely severely neglected I think they might have used uh, river water instead of tap water for cooling water. We got what we call a red river here, and that's about what it looks like. I'm gonna be here for a couple hours cleaning this water jacket out. Well, this side is so stopped up that there ain't hardly nothing coming out of the bottom hole. I'll be back in a couple of days. Well, she's had a bath in gunk engine degreaser. Then she had a bath in Wata. Then she got soaked in WD, a run out of WD. She got soaked in P&B. So, tomorrow, I believe, we might be able to put it together. My new pistons came in finally, but they are not an exact match, as you can see. Skirt, shorter on the new one, maybe even wider. Uh, you can't find long skirt pistons anymore. I'm sure these are not the same weight either, but you know what? They'll do just fine. I didn't want to have to buy a whole set of pistons. I bought two, they were pretty cheap, so it'll work. Now what I gotta do is get this piston off this rod and then get this rod on this piston. All right, I'm gonna try to drive it out without heating it up first. I don't know if it's gonna work. Well, they're, they're in there pretty tight. Uh, but let me tell you this, you wanna keep this rod oriented with the piston just like it is. Here's your notch. Well, you're gonna keep this side to the notch. So mark it, do whatever you gotta do. Keep this side with this notch. All right, let's try this a different way. Let's try her about right there. Get a little more solid surface to hit against. And there she is. Now remember, I need to mark this, I guess, but this side goes to that notch. So I'm just gonna set them right here on the table just like that for now. All right, now this is how you put the rod, old rod on the new piston to get the pin in it. You heat the end of that rod up. You can see it's discolored where it's been done before. Anyway, heat that up. You No cherry red, just a dull red maybe. And you stick that in there. Then you slide your pin all the way through. It should slide by hand. And then on these, it's not exact. You know, as long as you're pretty well centered, in there and then your pin is centered on the piston then you're good to go so let me get the torch out and uh, we'll get that heated up and get this pin in I didn't get it exactly centered, but it's, it is more than enough. And you have to let this cool down, then you should be good to go. All right, now that I got the rods on the new pistons, I'm fixing to give all these their last and final cleaning. Then I'm gonna put the rings on them. Well, I gotta check ring gap first. But I just wanted to show you how I put my rings on. I'm not gonna video this part. I just wanna show you how I put my rings on. Uh, Oil ring, I'll put one groove here, one groove here. 
the second ring the groove goes here the top ring the groove goes here everybody's got their preference some will put it here and here and just well whatever that's how I do it and that's how you can do it if you want to anyway let me get these cleaned up and get the rings on and uh, then I think I think we'll be ready to start putting stuff in this block well, let me start off by saying I am not an engine builder I'm a mechanic so do not listen to me if you want advice for building a motor for horsepower I don't know I don't keep up with it but I do know how to rebuild one that's you know that's pretty standard stuff let me show you what I'm starting with I've been polishing the journals on the crank because I nicked them with uh, rod bolts and what I'm using is called crocus cloth right there it's really 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 fine and all I want to do is knock down the high spots where I nicked it. I'm done with it. I got to spray down WD-40 so it don't rust. Now what I'm going to do is come over here to the block. I'm going to clean out all these head bolt holes, the threads, because they may have some rust in them because, you know, water jacket. And that'll mess with your torque setting. You know, it may click. Well, if you use an electronic one, it'll beep. But it may click before it's actually torqued. So you want to clean all them out so I don't mess with you torque setting and once I do that uh, I take a file run across the deck that's just how I was taught to do it in case there's any burrs I don't think it really matters especially with the head gaskets you can use today but I still do it just because once I'm done with that I'm gonna clean the bores out good wipe them out even the lifter bores and just clean it in general and I'm gonna flip it on its head and uh, clean all that real good and we'll put the crank in and I'm probably going to use plastic gauge. I don't think I need to because it's got so much wear. But I'm going to use plastic gauge on it just out of curiosity just to see how much clearance I do have. And uh, once I do that, sometime I, I'm going to check the ring gap too just to make sure that we're good there. But like I said, I'm not an engine builder so I'm going to probably just time lapse all of this. It's a little better than I thought it would be. It's, uh, this one here is about, let's see, let me get the camera in there. It's kind of hard to tell because it's not smashed evenly, but that there's about three-ish. This one here is about, it's about two. This one, it's going to be about three. The only one is this one here. It's about four-ish. But I'm fine with, with what we got. I thought it'd be a lot more than that. So I guess I'll get these cleaned off, get them lubed up, put the caps on, and then I'll start putting the pistons on and we'll check the rod clearance. What are you doing, fat boy? Fat boy, what are you doing? Timothy, come here. plastic gauge I don't know if it must be old or something it ain't it ain't squishing like it ought to but what I'm looking at is well there's three 
and there's two it's it's right around two maybe a little more than two i'm good with that let me get the rest of these in and we'll we'll check them too Well, alrighty, we got the crank, bras, and pistons in. And I guess now we'll put the cam in, then the timing set, and uh, get the cover on. Then we flip it back over on its head, put the Earl pump and the Earl pan on. And then, well, we'll just keep on putting it together. How about that? Well, I got the cam and the timing chain set in, but this is extremely, extremely tight. I mean, it has no give whatsoever. Uh, I don't know what's going on with that, but I'm sure, you know, it'll probably stretch after just a few minutes of running. This is Perfect Circle, I think it's a brand. It's 30 years old. This is some of the stuff I bought for the 2A3 I never built. I don't know if y'all heard me talk about that before, but that's what this come from. Only thing I can figure out is that chain must have shrunk over the last 30 years. I don't know. Well, I reckon we're ready for some heads. I got these double humps down off the shelf over there. 30 years later, and I'm finally putting them on a the motor. <laughs> they are the 186 castings. Let me show you. Right, uh, yeah, right there. 186s, 202 intake valves. And I thought I had CC'd the combustion chambers a long time ago. 59, 59, 59, 61. I want to know that because I want to know the compression ratio. So I got to measure how far the piston's in the hole, head gauge ticket thickness, and uh, uh, the valve relief, how, how big they are. And then I'll figure up compression ratio. I'm figuring nine and a half to one, somewhere in there. Uh, anyway, let me get these cleaned up. I'm gonna file them a little bit because they got a little bit of surface rust. We're gonna file across them, blow all the dust and dirt out, and then we'll get them put on that motor over there. Well, it's pretty much back together, with the exception of some small stuff, carburetor, starter, water pump. I'm not putting the water pump on until after it's in the truck because, well, the fan is still on it. It'll just be sticking out there, so we'll leave it off for now. Uh, I got a carburetor. Forgot all about it. Let me show you. It come off of a, I don't know, early, mid-80s uh, motorhome. So I'm going to use that after I remove most of those hoses. I don't think I'm even going to rebuild it. It, it would just put it on like it is. But I don't have the valve covers on yet because I'm fixing to fill it up with some Earl. 
and to put my drive in there run it with a drill i just want to make sure i'm getting oil all up here where i'm supposed to also i did a little calculating and some guessing on a compression ratio if the valve reliefs are six cc's it's about a 9.5 6 to 1 if they're eight cc's it's about a 9.36 to 1. so in between nine nine and a half is what the compression ratio is ain't too bad for a jump motor now i gotta go run to the store because i don't have any oil i don't have an oil filter so as soon as I get back with that, we'll put the oil in it and put the drive in it and we'll see if we can get some oil up here on top of the motor. I don't have a dipstick yet, so I don't really know how much to put in there. I think that'll be good for now. Battery is about dead. Get a little bit right here. That one. Get a little bit in these. This is two here. Alright, I stole the dipstick tube off a of dude. I'll put it back. I put a valve cover on. I tilted the motor because I'm starting to make a mess. And I got tired of running batteries now, so I got the corded drill. So, Let's give her a try. Still ain't getting nothing out of these two. I'm going to uh, turn the motor over and see if I'd help anything. Ooh. Oh yeah, it helped that out a lot. That there's finally oiling. That there's still lacking quite a bit. Well, I'm getting pretty good oil flow out of them, except for this one right here. I'll get some air bubbles out of there once in a while, and that's about it. But even more concerning is this right here. That lifter won't pump up. As you can see, it's got plenty of oil flowing through it. It just won't pump up. Only thing I know to do, I'm not pulling the intake back off. I'm not. I just ain't going to do it. So one thing I know to do, put the valve cover back on it, run it, and hopefully when it heats up, maybe it'll start pumping up. So I think I'm gonna put this valve cover on. I'm gonna flip it over to this side and go over there and look at that side and see if we're getting oil everywhere. Well, here's the other side. As you can see, it's oiling wonderfully. Now this one here, it was a little squishy. Just like it's over here that wouldn't uh, pump up. It's you know directly across from it. But I run the drill just a little bit and it finally pumped up. So it's good now. Uh, that one over there, I know it's flowing oil pretty good, but maybe it's still got a little air in it. I don't know. These are brand new lifters. They're 30 years old, but they are brand new. They was in the box sealed up. That's some more of the 283 parts, you know, I bought 30 years ago. So I don't know, fingers crossed that it uh, It'll pump up eventually. What I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna put this valve cover back on it. I'm gonna forget about that lifter. And then in a week or two, when I put this motor back in that truck and it fired up and it's got a miss, well, I'll be wondering why has it got a miss? Y'all will have to remind me that that lifter ain't pumping up. Well, I got both valve covers back on. I got the motor sitting level again. And I got a major oil leak. That stupid valve cover's leaking right there. So I might have to do a little beating and banging on it. Also, I want to show you this. I got a brand new distributor. Uh, you know, I was going to rebuild the old one. Well, it's just it's just too far shop. I got this one for $30 on eBay, and it is an Excel. It was missing a coil in the button. It, it does have a rotor inside, so that's probably why it was so cheap. I got a coil, I got a button, so I ain't worried about that. Uh, but I'm going to say the motor, it's ready to go. There's, you know, a few small things. Got to have a fuel pump, starter, but... The major stuff, it's done. There's something else I want to run by y'all and see what you think about it. Remember how I named the 53 truck Dude? Well, I'm thinking about naming this truck. And I was pondering on two different names and I finally settled on one of them. And it has to do with the truck being so rusty. I'm thinking about calling it Tetanus, as in Tetanus Shot. You know, if you get cut in a rusty metal, you need to go get a Tetanus Shot. Well, how should I spell it? Should I spell it normal? 
or should I spell it like a redneck? You no, know, us redneck country people, they say we don't know how to talk, don't know how to spell. So I thought maybe spelling it T-E-T-N-E-S-S, -E -S, or should I spell it normal? Y'all let me know in the comments which way you think it should be spelled. I completely forgot to mention the uh, rod clearances it had. It was about one and a half to two thousandths, and I find that kind of odd. When I put the mic on that crank, it showed one to two thousandths wear. You add that to the factory clearance, and you know, it ought to be more than one and a half to two thousandths. So either my mics are off, or the plastic gauge is off. I tend to think it would be the plastic gauge. So I'm not real sure what oil to run, but I put 1540 in it, and we'll just have to see what kind of oil pressure it has. Also, I've got about $175 in this rebuild. Not including lifters or the timing chain set. I already had those, so you're looking at maybe $300 for a rebuild. That ain't bad. Will it run? Yeah, it's going to run. How long will it run? Well, that's a completely different can of worms. You got to remember, those pistons have a lot of clearance just because it's so wore out. And number six cylinder is pitted pretty bad. So it might run 30 minutes, it might run 30,000 miles. I don't know. Here's something else. I did stuff to this motor that you just don't normally do, all in the name of cheapness, just to get it back together. And I didn't want to show it because I don't want y'all to think that that's how I rebuild motors. And I just didn't want to hear it from the know-it-all, so it's just best to leave that stuff out of the video. Well, I think I'll wrap this video up here. This is liable to be a four or five video series. I don't know, you know, like I said, I'm only one person. There's a whole lot of stuff to do to this truck. Anyway, appreciate y'all watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you don't mind, hit that like, comment, subscribe, share it with your friends, hit that notification bell so you know when the other parts are coming out. And until next time, go do something.